Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Today um, we're going to be looking at Soundtrap again, which has been a common theme for this year for sure. Um, and I want to talk about making a vocal chain. So I've got an empty project here and I'm just going to drag this file from my desktop into this project. And this is a vocal stem from a recording we made here in our studio. And all I really want to do is talk about how I would go about making a, um, a vocal chain of effects to bring out the most of this as a mix engineer. So we're just gonna walk through these different steps and then um, and we'll follow it up with another video on the idea of busing. But uh, this is just a very basic vocal chain that you would uh, consider going through. So here we go. Um, I'm just gonna find a spot where there's some good solid audio. I know, I won't, I keep on telling myself. Okay, so we're actually gonna start right there. I'm gonna move my loop region over because this is the beginning of the chorus. And uh, just, we're gonna work with that area as we go along. So to get to the vocal chain, you're gonna click in here on this fun little icon, which will pop up this screen. And we're just gonna add effects. Just that easy. We are on a clean channel to begin with. You'll notice everything's uh, either not turned on in the middle, regular volume, neutral, bass, and treble. And the first thing we'll do is add a filter. And with the filter, um, just going to bump it up into the point where I hear it start taking effect, and then I'm going to draw it back. I keep on telling myself that I'm going to be better. I keep on telling myself so that's way too far. It's eliminated. It's almost sounded like a telephone now. So we got to pull it back. Turn your sweater. I know I won't be a good goal setter. I know I so for this one, somewhere in the 151 range, maybe a touch higher, uh, would be okay. And we're going to do the same thing for the high cut. This is eliminating frequencies that are too high and eliminating frequencies that are too low. Uh, be careful with the high cut. You don't want to eliminate too much sound. So. I won't get a big gold letter. I keep on telling myself that if I try harder, I keep on telling myself that I'm going to be better. I keep on selling myself. Now I'm wearing your... So just making really subtle changes right there to uh, to just get at the exact frequencies that are really giving us the most in our sound. Now the next thing I'm going to add is the parametric EQ. And uh, what I'm going to look for here are whistle tones, things that uh, are, are making a strange whistling sound in this audio. So I'm going to turn the Q factor, which is the width of the boost uh, parabola that is being created. I'm going to turn it to its narrowest point and I'm going to turn the gain all the way up. And what I'm doing here is searching for a whistle tone, searching for a place where you're going to hear like a pretty steadily in the audio. So here we go. Sweater. I know I won't be a good goal setter. I know I won't get a big gold letter. I keep on telling myself. And then we're just going to work it till we find the best spot to make that whistle the loudest. I keep on telling myself that I'm going to be better. I keep on telling myself. Now I'm wearing your sweater. I know I won't be a good goal setter. I know I won't. So there's a pretty strong whistle right there. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to widen up the Q factor just a little bit. And then I'm going to reduce the gain just to where it starts um, being a, an attenuation or a cut instead of a boost. So I'm looking for roughly negative three decibels, something like that. So it should be about there. I'm going to do the same thing with my mid frequency and see if I can find a another one. Letter. I keep on telling myself that if I try harder, 
I keep on telling myself that I'm gonna be better. I keep on telling myself now when you and again, I'm gonna make the curve a little wider and just a slight bit of reduction there. So now we've got a um, subtractively EQ'd vocal just to get rid of the stuff that's maybe um, bad or against the grain, right? I keep on telling myself that I'm gonna be better. I keep on telling myself. So now the next thing you'd wanna talk about is an uh, dynamic compressor option here. Um, lots of things and lots of opinions here on what you should do. Um, please take an opportunity to look up more about vocal compressors on the internet um, to understand exactly what each of these things does. But um, you can hear in this vocal that he really comes out with a lot of harshes. I keep on telling myself. So every time he comes with a harsh I, there's a definite spike in the audio chain. And you can actually see those spikes and guess where the words I are. So we want to be able to reduce the volume of the eyes, bring up the volume of the other parts, therefore compressing the distance that's different between the loudest and the softest volumes in this uh, vocal chain. And the whole goal is there is to make it easier for you as a mixer to be able to put this in its correct place in the audio. If it's not fluctuating so much from high to low volume, then it's gonna be a lot easier for you to mix it and match it with other things. So um, we just want to check out our gain reduction meter here, and we just wanna put a light bit of gain reduction um, by adjusting our threshold, our ratio, our attack, and release times. The threshold is the point at which the compressor kicks in, the ratio is how much the compressor actually takes off. This is a really simplified terminology. Attack uh, is how fast it kicks in after it spikes over the threshold. And release is how long it takes to let go. Um, so with a vocal, we don't want an instant attack. But uh, I like it in that 10 to 16 range for a vocal. We'll start about 13. Um, probably do like a 5 to 1 ratio. And then I'm just going to play with the threshold and the release times as I hear it to see where we can start getting some gain reduction. Now, uh, Soundtrap's compressor has automatic makeup gain, so it's actually going to bring up the overall volume as the spikes begin to reduce. I keep on telling myself so I'm just looking for that point at which we start getting some gain reduction. Myself, now I'm wearing your sweater. I know I won't be a good goal setter. I know I won't get a big gold letter. I keep on telling myself that if I try harder, I keep on telling myself that I'm gonna be better. I keep on selling myself. So at this point, we're getting pretty steady gain reduction throughout the the time. Just a little bit of gain reduction on the softer notes, some definite gain reduction on the louder notes, but everything is much more even. Now, to cap off our basic vocal chain, again, this is basics. You can do tons of other things to add effects, but um, we're going to add some reverb, and that is this room feature in Soundtrap. And a lot of times these uh, plate reverbs sound cool. So I'm going to use uh, on the vocal this plate reverb. Um, just use this drop down arrow, select plate. You can select whichever one sounds right to you and just blend in some reverb. Now I'm wearing your sweater. I know I won't be a good goal setter. I know I won't. So you'll have to listen to it. If that's the right sound for you, that's the right sound. That might be a bit much for this genre of vocal. So let's try medium plate. Get a big gold letter. I keep on telling myself that Maybe a small if plate. I try harder, I keep on telling myself that I'm gonna be better. 
I keep on selling myself. So maybe that small plate is really more for this uh, punk rockish genre that this uh, artist was going for. So you've just got to tailor it to match uh, the genre that you are shooting for. Um, now, in a lot of programs like Logic, uh, reverb is something that you would consider bussing in, and we're actually going to talk about how we would do bussing of audio in the next video. Uh, if you found this helpful, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button.